Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald. In downtown Springfield, in front of Union Station, right across the street from the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Museum, for the first time, this restored train station will be used as exhibit space. And if you like history and film, this is for you. Carla Smith, details, details, details. Sometimes they're great, sometimes they're a pain, aren't they? Oh, yes. But they had to be just right for yes. this exhibit, didn't they? They did, they did. Um, DreamWorks is very good at make sure, making sure that all the details for each scene is exactly correct, and mm -hmm. that's what they wanted for this exhibit. They, they were very attuned to details of an arm, details of a fold, details of how things line up, like the desk, or like the, the table over here. Mm -hmm. We had very specific photos to go from, and everything had to line up just exactly right, so it looked just as it did in the movie. Mm -hmm. um, the DreamWorks is very, um, they seem to be very keyed into, this is an exhibit about the movie. It's not necessarily an exhibit about the history. As close as they tried to stay to the history, mm -hmm. this is about, here's how it looked in the movie, and we want you to kind of have that immersive experience in stepping into or feeling like you're stepping onto mm -hmm. the set of the movie. It, it, it's kind of a circle, though, because mm -hmm. Spielberg did so much research oh, prior yes. to the movie, came here, studied for years on how to make the movie authentic. Absolutely. And so now he, he wants the, the movie to stay in the authentic mode that he tried to create from the history, you which, are is, exactly which right. is very interesting. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. And the... it was his idea mm -hmm. to actually have an exhibit of this type. That's my understanding. And, and we in Springfield got very fortunate to, to be did. able to house this, didn't we? We did, we did. Abraham Lincoln has been so good to us, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was vice versa, I think. I yeah. think so, I think um, so. As you walk through this, through this exhibit, we're now in Mary's White House bedroom. Yes. Um, you'll see these, on, on the wall, these wonderful uh, panels, these yes. murals that have been blown up. These are actually from the film, and, mm -hmm. uh, and you uh, all got the idea that if we could uh, intersperse these through the exhibit, then people mm -hmm. would get the feeling that what they were seeing in the movie, mm -hmm. they are also seeing on these creative sets. True, true, and it, and it also just kind of pulls it all together. You know, it, we're in a historic building with a different mm -hmm. purpose, and if you can pull in the environment to draw it all together and make it work together, mm -hmm. then you forget where you are. And yet, if you look around, you still see mm -hmm. this wonderful historic building has really not lost a whole lot of its integrity. Well, the connections are interesting. For instance, if you look at that middle panel, yes, you'll see that that uh, Sally Field as Mary, yes, is wearing um, an, some kind of an overcoat or a. a it's a, a dressing robe. A, a dressing robe. Okay. Yes. And then when you look on to the exhibit that we see here in front of us, her bedroom, mm -hmm. you'll find that same that same dressing robe hanging over Absolutely. the ottoman there. Absolutely. Which is, which is fascinating, and you make those connections as you go through. Yes. Um, we talked about, we talked about the uh, authenticity, the, the, this, this uh, French carpet, uh, her dresses, her everything, mm -hmm. everything was painstakingly uh, researched and, and done for the movie. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. And, and they went back to some of the old processes, I think, on some of the carpets, some of the wallpaper, as far as producing those things. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing mm -hmm. as to the attention to detail that has been brought forth in this whole process of making a movie. And then we're benefiting to get to mm -hmm. see just how, um, just, I'm lost. You just think, how good they are at it. You, you would think, you would <laughs> yes. think that for, for most movies, costumes, et cetera, are made 
in a, I wouldn't say a cheap way, but in a way that you wouldn't c consider lasting forever. But they didn't do that with this movie. They made oh, these yeah. so they would last nearly forever. And I think mm -hmm. he must have had the idea, this is going to be a museum, so let's make it to last, right? Well, I, I think that part of it, too, is, is the pride of detail and the, um, the thought of the impact of the movie. Um, Joanna Johnson is the designer of the dresses, and she was very interested in making these things that just didn't fall apart once they came off the mm -hmm. actress. Um, I think they really did have an understanding as to the impact of the movie itself. And, and she was uh, nominated for an Academy Award yes, for, she was. for costume design. And the set designer, was he, he won an Academy Award, didn't yes, he? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Um, as, as did, I think, also the set dresser. Um, so it's they have put their best effort mm -hmm. into doing the whole thing. You mentioned earlier that you were so fascinated with some of the quotes that Sally Field had yes. um, after having acted in the movie. And I want you to read the first one. I'll read the second one. But this is a, a, a quote from Sally Field, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> um, she says, he would send me things like little limericks or notes out of the blue, and we began to get, build a thread of intimacy. <laughs> that, that being her, uh, her uh, Daniel Day-Lewis, her yes. on, on-screen husband. And she also says, as far as I was concerned, this was the man that I had been married to for a very long time long time and was basically driving me crazy. And doesn't that image really, <laughs> really point to that? I mean, you can see that there. Oh, man. Those looks, um, that's a, if you don't behave. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, as we go through this, we'll see some more of Mary Co Mary's costumes. And yes. I think maybe one of the highlights of this whole thing is the office, which has been recreated oh, here. It's yes. the same office that was in the movie. And I've been told by some of your colleagues that it's also the, the uh, as close to the office that you have in the museum over here, mm -hmm. uh, the cabinet mm -hmm. room, mm -hmm. um, as could exist. I think so. I think so. We sent them 360 degree photographs mm -hmm. and stills of our office so that they would have a very clear idea as to how it was. And then they've also done so much research as well to know how cluttered the desk was. Mm -hmm. The only thing they're missing are our wonderful life formations. Mm -hmm. right, um, right. People. But I think it's very easy to imagine the actors in that set. Let's walk this way. Okay. Carlo, if you come in the Union Station north entrance, yes. and you turn to your right, this would be the first thing you'd see in the exhibit. Pretty much. And, and it's kind of neat, because what you've got going on here, it's muted right now. But there's a, there's a, a DVD here that people can watch about the process of making yes. the film. So if they weren't familiar with Link in the movie, they would get a little bit of information here, and also about the process, which is really what this exhibit is all about, the process of making a movie. It's a lot about that, yes. And, and this video talks about that attention to authenticity of the period and authenticity of detail, and how hard they worked to attain that. And it wasn't just the producer, it wasn't just the set designer or the um, costume designer, the actors were also so dedicated mm -hmm. to trying to make this as close to historic, mm -hmm. accurate, you know. Well, you, you had two leads in, uh, in Daniel Day-Lewis mm -hmm. and Sally Field mm -hmm. that I think probably had a pretty good reputation for doing their homework. I think so. Yeah. I Daniel Day-Lewis so. particularly. And, and, well, and Daniel Day-Lewis came and visited here, mm -hmm. um, got to see some of the Lincoln documents, talk to our historians, and, and get that kind of a perspective about Lincoln as well. Mm -hmm. um, so we were very excited to have him when he came. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, they, just that whole dedication was, it's phenomenal. Yeah, and, and as we mentioned, Spielberg had, had 10 years in this project at least already. At least, yeah. yes. Um, I, and again, these panels, I can't get enough of these panels. And this one particular, I remember this scene vividly, uh -huh. the way they, they shot this scene with him walking down the hall in the White House. And, and here, you've, you've made a, a, a sort of a triptych out of it, and yes. it just fits beautifully. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we were very excited to be able to utilize this scene, um, because even from the back, you can even imagine that this is really Lincoln walking down the hall. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's just a wonderful, wonderful picture. And, and there's a quote over here. I, I love some of these quotes you have. This is by Steven Spielberg yes. telling the story. My movies more often are told through pictures, not words. Yes. But in this case, the pictures took second position to the incredible words of Abraham Lincoln 
and his presence. So he was really taken with what he found here. Oh, he was. He was. And, and he did research not only here, but, you know, in all the repositories, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, just, you know, we talk about the, the words of Lincoln and how, how much they make an impact. Um, but you don't think about it until someone like Spielberg says, wow, my stuff is taking second, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, second place to what Lincoln actually had to say. So it, it increases one's respect for people who are that in tune to the substance mm -hmm. of Lincoln, um, and particularly when they're trying to emulate him or trying to present him as a person mm -hmm. and as a president. Behind you, a costume designer's dream. <laughs> this. Becoming Mary is, is sort of what this is, this is called and what it's about. Picture of, um, uh, just below the dress there, a picture of Sally Field and Mary Todd Lincoln um, as, as they sort of uh, uh, represent uh, their figures. Um, interesting though, I mean, when you, when you look at the intricacy of, of, of all that this costume designer had to do, she had her hands mm -hmm. full. She, mm -hmm. she, she enjoyed it though, I, I assume she enjoyed it. I think she did very much. Um, she used some quality materials um, to make the dresses, to create them, and um, just made them as vibrant as she mm -hmm. could to, to present the, the, the one Mary. Um, you know, well, Mary she, had, a, had a taste for, for extravagant clothes, and it shows. Yes. It certainly shows. Yes. It, this, this exhibit, by the way, is not finished. There's going to be some of her jewelry in here as well as soon as you get it finished. Yes. Right? They're, they're sending us a few more props um, and items that Mary would have had on her person or in her personal possession mm -hmm. um, as far as in the movie. Um, I think the one thing that's going to be easy to cloud up is that there's a difference between Mary the woman, the historical figure, and Mary the actress, or, or Mary from the movie. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't want people to uh, feel like we're putting actual um, <clears throat> Mary or Abraham Lincoln items out here. These are all things right. from the movie. They're um, items that uh, were used in the movie, that um, there might be documents that look very similar to something we have, but they are made mm -hmm. for the movie. And, and, and we're going to see that as we go through the, this exhibit further because you've got a, a, a several a, 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 cases where you have oh, pencils, pens, notebooks, sure. the kinds of things that were painstakingly made mm -hmm. to look as they would have looked in 1860. Yes. But they're, they were just movie props. They were just for What's the movie. What's interesting is, is how they can make movie props look the way they do because they're not making that stuff anymore. That's exactly yeah. right. That's exactly right. There's certainly an art to this mm -hmm. um, of the whole perceptions and appearances, um, which makes it difficult for people to sometimes separate them and, and make that distinction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's move on. Okay. Dr. James Cornelius, uh, curator of the Lincoln Collection at the museum. Yes. You probably watched this movie with great fascination. Yes. And with an eye like nobody else, because <laughs> you had a say in helping them decide what decisions to make. On, on a few points, yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, and, we're and, not Hollywood here. I mean, they've got a great, <laughs> talented crew there. But we did, we did help on a few points. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're standing now in front of Lincoln's office, mm -hmm. the, the office of the movie, not the office of, of reality, but the office of the movie. It's very much like the office that you portray in the museum. That's right, Mark. And um, we were honored to be asked. And they had both a little bit more space to work with for the film than we have in the museum. Mm -hmm. And they had a couple of different interests also in designing their presidential office and cabinet room. So it is very, very similar to the mm -hmm. one in the museum. But it has interesting differences, too. As we go through, I, I like this juxtaposition. Because one of the first things you see are the Lincoln mannequin mm -hmm. and the Tad mannequin. Yes. And it's interesting that Tad would be here because Tad apparently had to run to the house no matter what cabinet meeting was going on or That's right. how, how, how desperate things seemed. Tad was still running around the house, wasn't he? Before we had <laughs> bring your kid to the office day, it was the kid invading the office mm -hmm. all the time. The Lincolns were very um, lenient with their boys and Tad moved around the house, moved around the house having a great time. Um, playing, looking, talking to people, 
asking his father questions. Mm -hmm. He was a very inquisitive 9, 10, 11 and year old I'll boy. I bet the cabinet were rolling their eyes when all this was going on, don't they you were, think? They were not very mm -hmm. much in favor of this. <laughs> in general, personally, all the other cabinet members were much stricter, more sober men mm -hmm. than Lincoln was. And they raised their kids with a little more discipline, the, tip, the typical Victorian way. Tad Lincoln was yeah. a little different. One, one of the things that stands out is in front of the fireplace, we'll see that, that there are some child playthings there yeah. and some ch things that the child might look at or play with. So he was invited to stay and play during the meeting. And what is it that he's dealing with there? What is, what is Tad dealing with? Well, Tad is um, working with, I guess you'd say, not typical playthings. This is the privilege of being the president's son. Alexander Gardner, the great photographer in Washington mm -hmm. who started off working for Matthew Brady and then had his own studio, took many of the best photos of Lincoln, um, lent Tad this big box of glass plate photographs mm -hmm. uh, of, in this case, a couple of slaves, a man and a woman. And Tad is seen in the Spielberg film looking at these large things mm -hmm. and um, putting them back carefully into their slots in that carrying case. I'm not sure how many 11-year-old boys I would entrust with glass negatives mm -hmm. that size, mm -hmm. but we know that the whole family, Tad included, were very interested in this new science of photography and certainly at looking at the faces of the people for whom the war was being fought mm -hmm. in most respects, mm -hmm. the, the enslaved. And Tad also is fascinated by soldiers, as a lot of boys are, so he's got a battle map there on the floor. And he also had, in real life, a, uh, a commission as a lieutenant uh, from the War Department, mm -hmm. and he had a little uniform. G.I. Joe. He was, he was a, a little right. G.I. Joe, wasn't he? He loved meeting the soldiers <laughs> and playing the soldier. Uh, if we go back to the table again, this of course where the cabinet sat, but behind the table, between the two big windows, yes. would be Lincoln's desk. That's right. And, uh, and that's actually, that's, it's very realistic, isn't it? That, that's pretty much the way the room would have been set up. That's right. Lincoln's working desk, where he did most of his sitting and reading or writing, especially writing, was there between the two windows. And out the left window, you've got a pretty fair view of the Washington Monument, still not complete at mm -hmm. that point in history for him to reflect upon. And you know, a big view. This is the second floor of the White House. Yeah. And, and let's dwell on that for just a moment. This is before the Oval Office. That's right. This, would, this is what is now the Lincoln bedroom. That's right. And this is where his office was at that time. That's right. And the president's office had been for the roughly 60 years that mm -hmm. the White House had been occupied. So it's his office and it doubles as the cabinet room. Uh, two, three times a week, mm -hmm. and also where he sees individuals. Mm -hmm. All of those thousands of callers who stood mm -hmm. and waited in line to ask him a favor. And so Mr. Lincoln would sit there at that desk and read and write, and when the cabinet was called, he would move over here to the room, and they, to the table, and they've got all of their books and papers, of course. Um, we don't have uh, ashtrays and cigars on the table here, mm -hmm. though they would have in real life. And they have, um, they generally had more than a couple of ink wells around the room. We don't have ink or anything like it in our ink wells here because that would simply dry out mm -hmm. over time. Mm -hmm. But you get the idea that is a, an exact period yeah. ink well. And uh, people were taking notes all the time, of course. It's mm -hmm. a very important working yeah. meeting. And, and every, all of the books, you know, the books are mostly leather bound as they would have been in those days. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, odd looking, uh, crude little pencils, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. things, that, things that you don't see anymore. And maps, maps yeah. everywhere. Yeah. In on the wall where we're standing here as viewers would have been a wall in the real office and it also would have had maps posted. Mm -hmm. And you see, you get a better sense of that in the Presidential Museum room. But here I think they've replicated or given you that feeling pretty well too. Maps are the be all and end all mm -hmm. of fighting a war. And Lincoln was extremely good with maps, having been a surveyor himself mm -hmm. as a young man in New Salem, Illinois. Mm -hmm. And and just to show you how you have really, you and the film company have not uh, 
uh, avoided any hard work. That fireplace must have been the devil to move yeah. in. Here. I imagine <laughs> yes. that thing really was. It's not made of the materials that it looks like it's mm -hmm. made of. It doesn't weigh a ton and a half. It, it sure looks like it does, yeah. though. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful. It's yeah. beautiful. And the portrait of <laughs> President Andrew Jackson there, mm -hmm. Democrat. Lincoln's nemesis as a young man, uh -huh. uh, but Lincoln wasn't going to take that down. And the portrait of uh, the Whig president, William Henry Harrison, whom mm -hmm. Lincoln did support as a young man, um, is right over here on the side view. It was, in fact, right near his desk in real life. It, we it, didn't quite have space to fit that in here. And it was in prominent building. in the film, wasn't it? It's that, very prominent. Yeah. It's right over his right shoulder mm -hmm. when, in some of those scenes at the table here. Fascinating. Yeah. Carla, most films, you know, f films are filled with props and costumes and God knows what. And I guess after most films are done, that stuff either goes to a warehouse or to auction or to the dump or someplace. But in this case, it's, it's much of it's been preserved, hasn't it? It has. It has. DreamWorks has its own archive, and we worked with the archive staff in getting all of this here. Mm -hmm. So we're very fortunate in that they recognized the impact of their movie and the popularity of those things that were going to be in it mm -hmm. and the need to preserve them. You have an area here right between the office and the rest of the station here yes. dedicated to some of these props that we're talking about. Yes. And, and I, I really love the way you've chosen some of these. These gloves right here that we see, mm -hmm. now, people may remember that, and I'm going to let you tell the story because Abraham Lincoln, Daniel Day Lewis in the movie sort of threw these, didn't he? What was, what was what happened oh, in the movie? <laughs> I can't even tell you exactly what happens. I know that, that he had them in his hand and either something was said or he was given them and he just tosses them away. <laughs> And you know, and yet here we have these gloves. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, so they're they're not actual Lincoln gloves, but you know, Daniel Day Lewis as Lincoln, yeah. which I think is going to become a very iconic representation. I think so too. Um, and then I didn't know this. You said this is a stethoscope. It's an old wooden stethoscope. Yes, and this was used in one of the later scenes of the movie where they pronounce Lincoln dead, and we thought, oh, it's just such an interesting mm -hmm. piece. It goes with the movie. It's after all of this other stuff, but it's so simple. So simple and when, so unusual. When we were in the office, we were talking about Tad yes. looking at these glass negatives. Yes. And these are very well known pictures to uh, to the public now. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But this this is an example of the kind of things he might have been looking at. In the movie, he sure. was looking at these. Sure. And really, I think they're probably glass positives. Um, mm -hmm because um, you know it is the actual picture and it took me a while to realize that but to imagine some child or some person looking at these like almost like ball cards yeah yep. you know mm -hmm. and, and to him it was I'm not gonna say it was a game but he no. lived in a child's world that's oh, what was sure. going on in his mind sure and, and Morgan not, not Tad the 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 or Willie yes. the son that died when yes. when Abraham Lincoln was in the White House was a trained fanatic so these yes. were in the movie as well yes these there is a scene from Willie's bedroom and these are on the floor or or somewhere in the movie itself and we thought you know here we talk about all the boys and it would be such a shame to leave Willie out so mm -hmm. why not include these pieces that are so much a part of his persona? Well, they included him in the movie, so you oh, might sure. as well include him. And I well, love this little, little car here, DeWitt Clinton. Yes. You know, so he knew, <laughs> he knew Central <laughs> Illinois, didn't he? Yes, and these are, these are I'm sure, are period pieces. Mm -hmm. um, these are yeah. not recreated for the movie at all. Yeah. Now, and this is an interesting fact, too. This is not a picture of Willie. That's correct. They hired a young actor to yes. play Willie, even though Willie wasn't in the film. That's exactly <laughs> right. Well, how could you talk about this period mm -hmm. without remembering that they had lost this little boy yeah. and, and that impact that that had on them? Yeah. But yes, and doesn't he look a lot like Willie? They, uh, they hire a child actor just so they can get a still. That's exactly right. In the movie. That's exactly Remarkable. right. Didn't have to learn any lines that way. We talked about how much the office life has changed. You mm -hmm. know, they would all have laptops now or yes. pads. Yes. This this was indispensable. You mm -hmm. had to have a sharp pencil mm -hmm. and a notebook, mm -hmm. or you were sunk. Right. And you chose that one. You chose to keep that one. We chose to bring that and the pipe um, because they were both used by the John Nicolay character, who mm -hmm. was an Illinois boy, as we mm -hmm. all know, mm -hmm. and we needed to have some representation of one of those boys, mm -hmm. one of the secretaries. 
Um, the, William Seward, I think yes. he was Secretary of State. Yes. Uh, D David Strathairn played him in the movie. Yes. And this was the cane that he used uh, portraying Seward. Yes, isn't it lovely? It is lovely. I wonder where they found that. You know, I have, I asked the, uh, uh, the man who came from the DreamWorks archive on a lot of things. Where did they find this? Mm -hmm. It's like they found it, mm -hmm. you know, in they some antique They have tentacles place. all over the place. <laughs> all over the world. Of, over our shoulder. Another example of these wonderful panels that you all have, you, you chose, they made all this available to mm -hmm. you, you chose which to use and how to use them. Yes. And you use them on these immense windows. Yes. And look at the reach of Lincoln in oh, this. Yeah. This is terrific, isn't it? Oh yeah, bringing, bringing together people as he was so good at. Mm-hmm, really beautiful. Thank you. And over here, this is interesting too, because this is a photograph of Doris Kearns Goodwin and uh, the, the noted historian mm -hmm. and Daniel Day-Lewis uh, collaborating on uh, an idea or on a historical fact or something. I assume he was here when, when this they was taken. They were both here um, when they announced mm -hmm. uh, or in preparation for that. Um, and so they got to go down to the vault and visit with James mm -hmm. and... Um, James Cornelius? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. And, and you know, the movie itself, I think, is based on Doris's book, Team of Rivals. So that was partly why she was here at the same time mm -hmm. he was. But they got to experience, it's, it's very interesting, people who experience some of those Lincoln artifacts together and the emotional impact it has on them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but they got to experience that together, which I thought was very lovely. I think we have time for one more quote. Okay. Let's walk over here. Photograph from the movie, this is becoming, it's titled Becoming Lincoln, but this is Daniel Day-Lewis's quote. I was left with a sense of immeasurable pleasure at having been able, enabled by Stephen and Tony to explore this man's life. There has never been a human being I have loved as much, and I doubt there ever will be. And I think a lot of people feel that way about Abraham Lincoln. Don't oh, you? I think so. I think so. There are so many different people who identify with him not just in the United States, but all over the world. Yeah. We have visitors come from all over. So I hope they enjoy our representation of the movie as it represents mm -hmm. Lincoln. You all have done a terrific job. Thank you. Thank you so much, and thank you for coming. You bet. This exhibit, Lincoln, History to Hollywood, will be up for an indefinite period of time, and some of the items in the exhibit will be changed out from time to time. With another Illinois story in downtown Springfield, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.